Hello, welcome back to Call Clutter Fairy, where I help you get clutter free so that you can live stress free. If you've clicked on this week's video, it's because either you or someone that you care about might be a little bit more of a collector and you're wondering if it's a hoarding issue. Now, the word hoarding, I feel, gets thrown around a little bit more leisurely than what it really applies to. So if you're interested, stay tuned and we're going to get into really what that looks like. Collector or hoarder? As I was researching for this video, I found out that 5% of people are hoarders, which was overwhelming to me because that means pretty much one out of 20 households has a collection that exceeds what they can function in and it's defined as hoarding. So how do you know if you're someone who just has a wonderful collection or you like having an assortment of things or if you're a hoarder? Well, the easiest definition of hoarding is if the items that are around you keep you from functioning in the home. So if you're unable to use your kitchen in the way that it was intended to be used, or your bathroom, or your bedroom, or your dining room, then technically it's considered hoarding. Now, there's a whole varied clinical breakdown of hoarding levels, and I encourage you, if you feel that you're in this category or if you know someone who's in this category, to Google it. But they break it down by levels and they categorize it from zero to five. And I show that right here. But I'm going to go through a series of pictures here. And if you feel like you belong in one of these categories, I'm going to explain what that category is and walk you through how to get through it. Let's get started with the first category. So if you found that you were in this category, everybody wants the Pinterest house, but some of these pictures that I showed in the beginning, these aren't real homes. These were photos from a furniture manufacturer who's trying to sell their furniture line. These aren't real homes. So when you're looking at pictures like this that you find on Pinterest, this isn't reality. We helped a family yesterday and when we left their home, it looked spectacular. But I already knew the reality. If it was my home, the minute the laundry comes in, we sort it on the couch if we don't have one of those big, lovely laundry rooms. So we're going to have laundry on the couch, which then results in piles that have to go to each family member. And if it's like my house, you have two or three backpacks that have been spilled out because the kids are doing their homework. And without anything actually happening, your house looks like a bomb went off in it books, papers, maybe a snack where they were doing their homework, laundry, and you haven't even had dinner yet. This is normal life, and if you can stay on top of this, I don't consider you to be anything other than just living a normal family life. If you find, however, that you've exceeded what your collection is, and you are noticing throughout your home there are piles, there are boxes and things that haven't been addressed, that you've exceeded what your storage capacity is, then I still don't deem you a hoarder by any means, but it is time to step in right now and make an action plan. So let's talk about some of those action plans that you could do right now if you feel that you have exceeded and matched some of these pictures. So if you identified with any of these photos, now is the perfect time to make the action plan. And again, setting the timer. I had talked last week about taking a photo so that you can really easily see what's messy. Then get your keep bin, your donate bin, and a trash bag. And don't just attack the room because that is so overwhelming to do. But start honing in on one area of that room or pick one category to start pulling. And as you're grabbing those items, trash 
put anything in the trash that's broken, stained, outdated, missing parts. Don't even bother addressing those ideas. If you find yourself grabbing it thinking, oh, well, I'm going to fix this. Really look at how long have you been holding on to this. If it's been more than six months and you've been intending on fixing it but haven't, let it go. Six months is really about that window that I say, you're, if you're going to do it, you'll get it done. And if not, it probably isn't as big of a priority to you. For the donate items, there are so many different charities out there. They'll either sell the item and then use that money to benefit their cause, or they'll take it and give it to the people who can use it the most. So this is a feel good way to get this item out of your house and still let it be of benefit to someone else. Now for the keep items that you want to keep in your house, if you can't display it, but you just can't let it go, that would be something like a, a keepsake from a family member who's passed or a really special photo that you don't necessarily want to display. But make sure that it's in something that you can contain because the last thing you want to do is fill up a bookshelf and fill up an armoire and fill up a bureau and fill up a wall and then go in and find your storage filled or your garage filled with boxes upon boxes. That's when you might need to look at things and really be honest with what do I need to keep and how valuable is this item to me if I'm willing to let it sit in a box for a couple of years and not be enjoyed. So it's a hard thing to do, but if you're finding yourself in a situation where you're even questioning if you're hoarding, you guys, you've got to be honest right now and see what you can let go of. So this leads me to the next category and these, these are hard to look at. And if you do find yourself in any of these scenarios, then stay tuned because I'll walk you through what to do. So if you found yourself identifying with any of these photographs, this is where an intervention of some sort might need to happen. And it's a hard thing to say to someone that you care about, and it's a hard thing to admit to yourself. Here's some of the warning signs of potentially being in a hoarding situation. A lot of us are chronically disorganized, but if you find that every day you're leaving late and getting to places because you're looking for your keys, your phone, your wallet, your purse, and you, you don't know where they are in the piles of things that you have, that's one sign. Another sign is the unwillingness to let people come over. This happens because the clutter has gotten so bad that you don't want anyone else to see it. and. Most people who find themselves with a lot of chaos of clutter around them isolate themselves because of the shame that's associated with it. Another, and I spoke about this last week with taking the photograph, is because we develop clutter blindness. And this blocks you from being able to see and realize how your home looks to others. So if you have someone come over and they're voicing, wow, you've got a lot of stuff, you need to be able to try and hear what they're saying because you've stopped seeing your surroundings for what they really are. Another area is if you're distressed about your belongings, meaning a lot of us enjoy our collections, but if your belongings have become a burden and you're having difficulty finding pleasure in them, then perhaps you either need to whittle it down or you've probably gone beyond that healthy level of collecting. This is one that I see in more of my clients than anything else, and that is being a shopaholic or compulsive buying. The thrill of going shopping, whether it's online or actually going to the stores, creates a quick boost of happiness and joy. And then once we get it in the car or we're waiting for it to be delivered, that excitement and high of what we just bought dissipates. And when it comes, we just throw it in a corner or a room or a garage and it loses its appeal. And what I have found that I have a lot of clients that I work with who have this large collection of things that they've bought, um, 
And if you're finding that this is happening with you, if there are items that you've bought and you've never opened the box, or even worse, they're still in the bag, this is a sign that there's an underlying issue and perhaps someone could come in and help you with this. So what do you do to help with hoarding? Well, the first step is finding or providing support. One of the most important things is finding someone who will just listen or be heard without judgment. The second is patience. It's gonna be a really difficult time for the person who is going through this and they cannot just get rid of these things and someone who doesn't have these hoarding tendencies will not be able to understand that. So patience is crucial. But the most important step, and this might be the hardest if you are helping a loved one or if you're in the point of your life where you're trying to accept that this might be the state that you're living in, is finding professional help. And that either means a licensed therapist or a professional organized who's certified in assisting with hoarding. Um, there are several therapies that can be provided which help the person to rethink and learn how to handle these hoarding tendencies, but this has to be a very slow process with a lengthy recovery so that they are changing their habits long term. If you are trying to help a hoarder and you go in and you just clear out an area and get rid of it, you're taking away the person's trust and this will just lengthen their recovery. But because the healing hasn't happened for their disorder, and this is a clinical illness, it's just going to revert back. That's it for this week's video. I hope that some of the things that I've spoken about either help you directly or help someone that you care about to get through and get control of their areas or get help if it does exceed what is normal. Um, I know this is a really hard topic to get through, but if you found that it did resonate with you, please leave me a comment. I'd love to know how it helped you directly or if you've been able to help a family member in the past or you're dealing with it right now. I'd love to know what hurdles you have and be able to find resources for you. Also, please click the like button. I do post videos every week, and if you click the notification button next to the subscribe button, you'll be alerted whenever I do post a new one. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week.